بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello again I'm Professor Dr. Kot Today I'm going to, take to, to talk to you about diseases of the external ear Diseases of the external ear include congenital, traumatic, inflammatory, neoplastic and some miscellaneous conditions In each one of these conditions we are going to talk about the etiology of this condition which type of etiology the clinical picture in the form of symptoms that the patient might complain of signs, examination signs that can be elicited from the patient investigations if they are needed to reach a diagnosis and the treatment condition how can it be conducted to the patient in this session we are going to start with the congenital diseases of the external ear number one is the atresia or the aplasia of the oracle it's called microtia Microtia is an abnormally deformed oracle like this, while anotia is a complete absence of the oracle like this. This condition might be unilateral or bilateral. It can be associated with middle ear or inner ear anomalies. Disfigurement is the main problem of the patient. Usually, the parents, especially the mother, is complaining from disfigurement of her child's ear. What can be done? Plastic surgery can be performed just before school age. Why? Before school age, before the, pay, the, uh, the, the child can go to school and his uh, colleagues in school can talk about his ear a lot. This, is, this causes psychological problem for the child. Like this, they use a costal cartilage, yes, to be refashioned in order to simulate the, the cartilage of the oracle and then covered by a skin just like this example. This is not my case actually, this is taken from the internet. This is the microtia and this is the appearance after surgery. Like this one, this is also not my picture. This is microtia and this is the child uh, with reconstruction. It can, there, there is also a prosthesis, uh, just like skin, that can be anchored to the skull uh, using magnets like this. Yes, this is a prosthesis. Then the second one is the accessory oracle. What the accessory oracle? They are skin tags that can contain cartilage inside. They are, can be found from a line on a line uh, drawn from the tragus of the uh, of the oracle, like uh, here, to the angle of the mouth here. Yeah. Yes, this they cause just disfigurement. It should be left alone unless the patient is complaining from disfigurement, a bad, ugly face. If he, uh, uh, if this is the problem. The third one is an abnormally large oracle. It's called, on the contrary, macrotia. It should usually, it is a bilateral condition. Again, it should be left unless the patient is complaining of its shape. While the commonest deformity ever in the oracle is the pat ear. What's meant by a pat ear? Abnormally protruded oracle to laterally or to the outside, like this one. Here, like this one. This is a normal appearance and this is an abnormally protruded oracle. It is only a disfigurement that annoys the patient, and if so, it can be corrected surgically by a plastic surgeon. Then we reach to what's called a preauricular fistula. What's a fistula? Fistula it is only an opening in front of the helix or at the root of the helix here. Yes, this is an opening here. This opening is not connected to the inside, it's at a blind side, a blind end, should be called a sinus, not a fistula, because a fistula is a connection between two openings. It is actually a sinus. It had can might has a cyst, and if this opening is obstructed by some dirt, it can lead to infection and some redness here, forming a small abscess here. Can you see this? This is redness, hotness, small swelling, painful. Yes, this is inflammation of the preauricular fistula and signs. If so, it should be treated. Yes, it should be treated by antibiotics. This condition is, can be unilateral or bilateral. It is usually a remnant of the second branchial arch. A branchial arch, what's a branchial arch? It is not our issue uh, uh, in this session. It's usually asymptomatic. It has no, it has no symptoms unless it is infected. So the patient can be delivered with it since childhood and die with it without any complaint in his life. 
if sometimes it is infected, it should be treated and then it should be treat, uh, removed surgically. Now, we reach to the external auditory canal. The external canal, yes, it can be congenitally stenosed or congenitally unappeared like this. This boy has an auricle without an external auditory canal. Yes, this is called a congenital meatal atresia because meatal atresia could occur due to other issues. It can be usually, it can be, yes, it can be associated with hemicrotia or abnormally abnormally small or deformed auricle. This is the way here. Acrotia and metal atresia. Microtia and metal atresia. Yes. What is about its condition? Usually, it is a unilateral or bilateral disease. Yes, it could be just narrowing or even complete absence. Again, the same like microtia. It could be associated with external literary like the auricle or middle ear or an even even inner ear anomalies. What is the main complaint? If it is alone, if it is alone, genital atresia alone, it is just a con problem in the conduction of sound from the outer to the inner. Yes, it is the only problem unless the patient has microtia associated with it. So disfigurement will be the main complaint. How can we detect it? But just by examination? Yes, examination is enough to diagnose this is metal atresia. Yet, we should perform a CT scan, Petrus bone, in order to know whether this is bony, this is uh, bony and uh, skin, it has um, small dilatation, it is just a stenode, if there is a well-deformed middle ear or inner ear, and so on. Again, hearing assessment should be performed for this child. Hearing assessment here is usually done by what's called ABR. ABR is an auditory brain stem response, and it is not, yes, again, our issue for today. What can be the solution? Yes. Here, it is, it is different from a bilateral to a unilateral disease. What is the problem here? If the patient has a bilateral problem, this is a child. This is a child, bilateral problem, that is to say, he cannot hear. Yes, he will not develop speech. Yes, speech is highly dependent on hearing. Yes. In this case, in the bilateral case, yes, the patient should have a hearing aid which can allow hearing to be conducted to the inner ear and then the auditory cortex so the child can acquire hear and acquire speech. What is this name? If there is no, if there is no oracle and there is no external auditory canal bilaterally, there is a hearing aid which is anchored to the, uh, to the mistide bone. And here, this hearing aid can pick up sound and amplify it and, trans it and transfer it to the inner ear directly and then to the auditory nerve and then the higher cortex directly. This is used, yes. Here in this condition, if the patient has a problem just in the external auditory canal, metal atresia only, yes. If it is stenosis, they can use a behind the ear, the ear hearing aid, which is called VTE. If there's complete absence of the external auditory canal, again, paha is usually used. Bone anchored hearing aid. What is about a unilateral case? Oh, a unilateral case, there is a unilateral problem Why the other ear is normal. If the other ear is normal and hearing in the other ear is normal, this child can develop hearing and can develop speech all over his life. So it is not a problem for the time being. It can be spoiled later on in his life. If he has an oracle, it can be postponed until he becomes an adult. If he has a deformed oracle and a metal stenosis, yes, that deformity and that stenosis should be done at least before school age. And thank you. And what is you, Professor Dr. Kotb?